Hello, I'm Rick Hasselberg with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Office of Nuclear Security and Incident Response. In the spring of 2011, the NRC's Incident Response Organization sprang into action in response to the devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan. In this video, I will provide a brief overview of the NRC's response activities following the earthquake. In the early hours of March 11, 2011, members of the NRC's executive team were already receiving updates from our headquarters operations officers about the devastation caused by the magnitude 9.0 earthquake that occurred off the east coast of Japan and of tsunami warnings that were being issued across the Pacific Basin. With U.S. territories at risk and with several NRC licensees within the warning area, the NRC was placed in its monitoring response mode. Our Region 4 office in Arlington, Texas, assumed the lead for monitoring the readiness of U.S. nuclear power plants within the warning area. NRC headquarters in Rockville, Maryland, concentrated on the international aspects of the event, including coordinating assistance that might be requested by Japan. The NRC executive team, led by NRC Chairman Gregory Yasko, oversaw all aspects of the NRC's response. The chairman was actively engaged, briefing the White House, addressing the news media, testifying before Congress, and conducting news media interviews. The NRC maintained a 24-7 response posture for several weeks. The executive team of senior officials held regular discussions with the heads of other federal agencies and with nuclear industry executives, and it received regular status updates from the response teams assessing and analyzing the incident, including from the NRC's team in Japan. The NRC's reactor safety team had very little plant-specific information to work with, but a modified team of plant technology experts, core cooling and accident assessment analysts, seismologists, and communicators was assembled and did what it could to analyze what was happening in Japan. Based on what we were hearing on the news, the situation was very grim. Since the Fukushima units were similar in design to several U.S. facilities, the reactor safety team prepared as much information as possible on those units. It also worked with GE Hitachi, the Department of Energy, the Office of Naval Reactors, the Electric Power Research Institute, the Nuclear Energy Institute, and several utility companies that operate similar reactors to share information and assessments. While the reactor safety team was doing its best to assess facility damage, the NRC's protective measures team, comprised of experts in radiation dose assessment and protective actions, had an even tougher assignment. That team had to try to estimate the possible health and safety consequences of the event and recommend appropriate U.S. government actions. The protective measures team worked with the National Atmospheric Release Advisory Center to obtain hourly weather conditions and forecasts for the Fukushima area. Using a similar U.S. plant as a surrogate, the team programmed its Radiological Assessment System for Consequence Analysis, or RASCAL code, to model various core damage scenarios based on different levels of core and containment damage. Over time, as conditions worsened and more units became involved, the Protective Measures team updated its modeling parameters to represent increased degrees of core damage and greater radiation release rates. The liaison team communicated with international contacts, U.S. government agencies, the White House, Congress, and response officials from dozens of states and territorial governments. As you might imagine, the telephone stayed very busy. Liaison team members were dispatched to several off-site locations, including Japan. Additionally, several federal agencies assigned special representatives to the NRC. Learning from the national response to the Gulf oil spill of 2010, the liaison team served as the focal point of a government industry consortium, a group of government agencies and private companies that banded together to provide a consolidated set of U.S. recommendations, capabilities, and physical resources to support Japan. The NRC's public affairs staff kept the news media and the public informed by issuing more than a dozen press releases and fact sheets and writing numerous blog posts. The public affairs staff also prepared and regularly updated talking points 
so the NRC's chairman and senior executives would have factual, up-to-date information for interviews and testimony. On the evening of March 11th, two NRC experts were sent to Tokyo. By March 14th, nine more NRC staff members had arrived. These individuals served as the first wave of an NRC support team. Their primary mission was to assist the U.S. Ambassador with technical advice to ensure the safety of U.S. citizens in Japan. The team also assisted the Japanese Regulatory Authority and supported other U.S. assistance efforts. Some members of the NRC Japan team also traveled to the Fukushima site to see the damage firsthand. While the NRC no longer maintains around-the-clock staffing in our operations center in response to this event, the NRC remains very active in supporting international coordination through organizations such as the International Atomic Energy Agency and the Nuclear Energy Agency. The NRC is also focused on making sure that the agency and its licensees learn as much as possible through this incident to promote enhanced safety in U.S. nuclear facilities. Some of our earliest actions were to direct NRC resident inspectors and our regional inspection staff to conduct special inspections to evaluate each licensee's readiness to respond to a station blackout, flooding, and other extreme events such as those that occurred in Japan. We also requested that the nuclear power plant facilities certify under oath that they have workable mitigative capabilities and strategies for dealing with these extreme events. The Commission also established a senior level task force to review NRC processes and regulations to determine whether the agency should make improvements to our regulatory system. A short-term review has already been completed addressing near-term operational and regulatory issues, and a longer-term review will follow. The international response to the disaster at Fukushima Daiichi will go on for many, many years, and the NRC will continue to assist with that response as needed. As with other life-changing events, all of us should make every effort to understand and never forget the lessons that were learned at such a tragic cost.